Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and I'm in a good mood today because yesterday I went and picked up this new dump trailer, and today I'm going to try doing a few different things with it. Um, mainly in this video, I want to walk you through what I was looking for when I was shopping for dump trailers, the features this one has, the other features that maybe it didn't, and why I bought this dump trailer, and what I plan to do with it. So. I think it's going to be a great addition, and I guess you never really know until you put it to use though, but this is something I've wanted for a long time, so let's start checking it out. So the first thing is wheels and tires. These are 7,000 pound axles, and for me, I think that's a minimum for a dump trailer because um, the trailer weighs 4,000 pounds with two 7,000 pound axles. You've got a 14,000 capacity, but the trailer takes up 4,000 of that, which leaves you five tons you can put in the dump trailer. Any less than that feels like a waste of time, but any more than that puts you in danger of crossing the weight threshold for the DOT to start requiring you to have a CDL and things like that. So if you have a three quarter ton truck and a 14,000 pound trailer, you're at around 24, 25,000 pounds, and you're just right below that 26,000 pound number that personally I have every intention of staying under. I'm actually a little lower than that because I have a half ton truck. Now my truck is a 2019 Ram Limited, and it has a rated tow capacity of just under 12,000 pounds. So with a 4,000 pound trailer, that means according to the rating, I could put 8,000 pounds in it, which is four tons. This trailer filled across the top is six yards. A yard of rock weighs about 2,500 pounds, depending on if it's crushed rock with fines in it or if it's clean rock or, or whatever. But that adds up to the fact this thing could have 16, 18,000 pounds in it if you filled it up with crushed rock. So I feel like this is a great weight rating for me for a trailer but you have to be careful and not just assume that I can fill it up no matter what's in it because you can very easily if you're you know loading a very dense material you can overload the capacity of the trailer not only for your vehicle to pull it but also for the bed to even be able to dump it so I've got the two 7,000 pound axles it's got 10 ply tires on it and then I had them add a spare wheel and tire. I'm actually going to take it back over there. They said you know the trailer has black tires on it everything on the trailer is black. They only had the gray rims. They said uh, if you want to just take it like this bring it back in a couple weeks because they were out of the black spares. So I'll be switching that out later. You know it wasn't a big deal if that's how it stayed. I barely even would notice it or think about it but all right, so let's move along to the next thing. So like I said, my very first thing is, how much can I haul? That's kind of determined by the size of the trailer, which if I didn't mention it, this is an 83 inch by 12 foot trailer. So 83 is just one inch short of seven foot. I'm gonna call it a seven by 12 dump trailer. So after I covered what can I haul with this, because that's what really matters. The next thing is the back gate. How do you empty it? So, this is what you'll see on a lot of trailers. I think they call it a three-way gate. Seems like a two-way gate to me. But, um, first position is closed. Second position is swinging the doors open this direction. They use a nice heavy linch pin to hold everything on this. I'll put that back in here so I don't lose it. Now it's pretty standard for these doors when you swing them open to have a spot to hook them. I like that it's all built into this so there's nothing I can lose. I've got this hook right here and then there's a heavy D-ring right here on the side. When you swing it closed, you just or when you swing it open, you just loop that D-ring over the hook. 
Now when you go to lift, your doors are held open and you don't have to worry about bending your doors. Then on the bed, we have these four D-rings in the four corners. Nice heavy duty D-rings for strapping down equipment. The entire trailer is powder coated instead of painted. So position one on the doors is closed. Position two is swung open from the sides. Position three is tailgating the material. I also like everything on here is greasable. Even these pivot pins right there have a grease zerk. I'm going to go ahead and tilt the bed a little bit so I can show you position three on this back door, which is tailgating out the material. So when you want to tailgate, you have adjustable chains here. I'll show you on the other side where the lighting's better, but all you do is pull this handle, let it swing open. That allows material to slowly tailgate out the back as you drive. Here's what I was saying about tailgating. I like the system they have. You've got this chain that allows you to decide how much you want the back open. He said for light tailgating, you're probably only gonna put it about here. If you want it to swing way open, you can move the chain further down. So you just drop that through the hole and you drop your chain through this slot right here. I'd say the majority of the time, I'm just gonna leave it through that slot, but you do have the option to swing it open further. While we are still at the back of the trailer, I'll talk about the ramps. You don't have to open the doors to get the ramps out, but I am going to do that because I want to get up in the bed and show you something else. All right, so the ramps slide under the bed, which is something I like. So once again, it's held in with a nice heavy linch pin. That's all there is to putting the ramps on. There's a heavy channel right here just swings in. Now I want to show you the cover for the bed. Alright, so you saw me pull the bed cover back, loop it over the end, there's some hooks back there, and then all you do is pull it till it's as tight as you want it and you drop this little lever and it stays. And you've got these eyelets on it that you can fasten to this rail right here if you want. Nice simple system. I'm going to go unhook it from the back and reel it in now. Now you reel it in until this hits on this set of hooks. Drop your bar down. And that's all there is to it. Before we move up to the front, I want to cover some more features on the side of the trailer. Number one, for a step, they have a really wide step right here. For getting in the bed. It's heavy built. Now the fenders are a heavy diamond plate. It's got stake pockets, and those stake pockets open wide at the bottom instead of maybe just having a hole in the bottom or just being a bracket at the top. Those run all the way down, but they have a wide opening at the bottom to make sure water's not collecting in there and leading to more rust. Then you have this channel that runs the entire length of both sides for strapping things down. Now let's talk about it actually working. So I've got a lockable toolbox here. And pretty long cord. I haven't cut the zip tie off of it yet to see if it'll reach up to the driver's seat, but I'm pretty sure it will.
So it's hydraulic up and it's gravity down. The way the salesman told me about it is it's pros and cons. Some people would prefer hydraulic up and hydraulic down. Um, some people prefer the hydraulic up and the gravity down. The advantage to the gravity drop is it's not using any power from your battery to lower it. So either way, that wasn't a big deal to me which way I got it. This has a scissor lift to raise the bed. From all the research I've done, it's better to have one lift than the dual ram. Immediately I thought dual ram's better. You've got twice the lifting power. That's not how they do it. There are two smaller cylinders on the outside. And if you've ever worked with anything that lifts with cylinders, you know you can down the road have issues with one pushing harder than the other one or it's just two places to leak smaller cylinders to me and from what I've seen you're better off with the one large cylinder now, some people prefer to have the telescoping lift at the front which is kind of a newer way of setting these up I'm happy with this system right here so we'll let this down real quick said so it comes down about the same speed as the hydraulic down You've also got the pockets on the front. Pretty soon in a video I'll be building extended sidewalls. I don't know how often I'll use them because for most things you don't need them. You can get the full weight limit of the trailer just at the level of the bed. So as far as the way the front's set up, they set me up with a B&W reversible hitch. So I can run my two inch trailers or this two and five sixteen. It's adjustable up and down height wise. The trailer itself can also be adjusted up and down. So if I do get a three quarter ton or a one ton truck later and want it to ride higher, I can. But, or actually, or if I need to drop that so it rides the same. But I like to have options and versatility. You've got a trickle charge for the battery in your wiring harness. Very heavy duty jack handle. Although, since I have the air ride on this Ram, I prefer not to ever turn a jack handle. I like to drive under it, raise the truck up, lift this drop leg, which it's got a spring loaded, like six inch diameter drop leg on it that makes it a lot easier. So, I back under it, raise the truck, come out here, lift the drop leg hook up the chains and the wiring and and take off so but if you didn't have you know a truck with an air ride you know your handle on this sticks out this far so you got a big turning radius probably a you know pretty standard but it's definitely better than the jack stands that are or the jacks I have on my smaller trailers so once again this is a locking toolbox here's your battery charger your marine battery hydraulic pump uh, fluid reservoir controller so there's only one thing that this trailer doesn't have that I showed up to the dealership wanting and that is drop leg jacks my other equipment trailer that I always load the tractor on when I drive onto it it lifts up in the air so hard it tries to lift the truck off the ground and I have to put jack stands under the back the salesman told me that they can put those drop legs on here. It's not that hard to do, but he also said he doesn't think I need it. They use this same model trailer. They haul a skid steer on it with a half ton truck and it doesn't lift his truck when he puts that skid steer on. It's a difference in, you know, your tongue length, the way the axles are built and positioned, the front weight of the trailer. He says it's just not as much of an issue with these. So what he suggested is try loading my tractor on it. If it loads all right, then we're good. And if it doesn't, bring it back in and they'll put the jacks on it. So now let's talk about what I paid for this and why I bought it. So I've been wanting a dump trailer for a long time. You know, I've, like a lot of guys, I've got a long list of things I'd like to have. And the dump trailer was pretty high up on that list, but they're not cheap, so I didn't have one. Well. I decided to just go look at some. 
because I'm doing more paid tractor work and I've had people ask me, can you bring some rock and fix my drive? Or can you level out my yard where I've got some low spots? And uh, man, it would be really nice to be able to haul stuff. Also, I've got an eight week timeline on getting my new building delivered and I'm gonna install that myself and it's on a hill. So I have a massive project in front of me leveling out this ground. And I'm either going to have to bring in a lot of material to raise that, or more likely, I'm gonna dig down and grade that out level. And either way for that, I'm gonna need a dump trailer. It's just a have to almost. I'm also planning to dig a pond up here and need to move that dirt as I go. So just, I felt like I needed one, but I was telling myself I'm gonna wait a month or something and then go look at them. I thought, I'll go stop in and look. So the place I bought my last trailer, I went in there and asked about pricing on a dump trailer. They said they didn't have any that day. Said we haven't had any in a while. If we do get one in, it sells the same day or the next day. And if we try to specifically order one for you, the wait time is six to eight months. Said that's crazy, I can't believe that. I'm just gonna go to a different trailer dealer. Nope. I called a bunch of places, I went to several places, I couldn't find anywhere that had dump trailers. Then I found one dealer of Four States Trailer Sales and they had two of this size, one black one and one blue one, and then they had some bigger ones. And they said that their orders are, that they've got thousands of trailers ordered and they're being pushed out, and that's not just dump trailers, but all types of trailers. But those orders just keep getting pushed out further and further, so they're ordering more so that when they do start delivering, they'll be able to keep up. But they said they're going really fast. You know, if the this last black one, the like I wanted sold, they didn't know when the next one would be in. And so that's why I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on it. Now, these have already went up in price. This was this trailer was $9,670 or something like that. And then another 300 for the spare tire. So it's about $10,000 for the trailer. And that's a lot of money. But my gut feeling is that this $10,000 trailer will be $12,000 in a couple months. And next year it might be fifteen dollars Because metal prices are going up. Prices of all materials are going up. I've got this manufacturing business up here. And I just did my first price increase of $25 per product as the first price increase in like two years. I was really happy with where my prices were. I like to make an affordable product, but all my materials are going up. So you don't have any choice. It's gonna be the same thing with trucks and trailers and pretty much any kind of equipment you're looking at. You already can't get a tractor. So I said, if I want a trailer, I better take this one home. And so that's what I did. Now, if you know how I do things on this channel, you're gonna see three or four videos in the next 10 days about this trailer, and then just steadily using it and making more videos as I go. My next immediate video is, can I use this trailer to haul my tractor? Will it fit? Will it load easily? Is the weight rating appropriate? Can I take attachments? I think I have an idea if I can't fit it in there with an attachment, which is what I, thinking is going to be the case but if I can get the tractor in but not with attachments kind of have a plan of how I'm going to do that and I've actually got a job coming up that I want to use the dump trailer take the tractor to the job and use it that way so you'll be seeing that I'm going to measure out and see how much firewood I can put in here loose thrown and stacked you know how much space does three tons and five tons of rock take up in a trailer like this you know, how much mulch weighs when it's filled up to the top. I'll have a video building um, sideboards for it. So you're going to see a lot of content about this trailer over the next couple weeks and the next couple months. Well, I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. In just a minute, you'll see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos. And I'll see you next time.